Dakota Public Employee Retirement System uh, manages our multiple retirement programs for the for the state and its uh, subdivisions that choose to be a participant in those. Included in, in those plans is the main system, which uh, involves 27,492 uh, members, of which 7,214 are retired, so approximately 20,000 active. Uh, the Highway Patrol, Judges, Guard, National Guard, Law Enforcement, Job Service are involved in that. And we have 268 employees who are, who are on a defined contribution plan, so all the rest of the employees are on a defined benefit plan. Senate Bill 2059 is a continuation of a plan that was begun in the previous session to restore uh, the uh, pension plan from a big hit that it took uh, earlier in the decade in, in the 2008-2009 fiscal year. Ten years ago, the, the plan was 104% funded. As it stands right now, it is considered to be 64.7% funded. Uh, Mr. President, uh, returns on investment in 2008-2009 uh, uh, year were a negative 24%. So every dollar, $100 of value in the plan, uh, it became $76. So the plan has uh, needed to be uh, adjusted to uh, take care of that recovery. There was a 21% uh, return in, in the 2010-2011 uh, fiscal year but that doesn't just do it. Uh, so included in the assumptions are the assumptions on rate of uh, return on investments as you go forward in, in planning for the plan and who knows what that's going to do uh, going forward. Over the last 30 years uh, the 8% assumption that we've used has been a conservative number. So what 2059 does is it, it uh, as, as a continuation of, of the recovery plan, it uh, bumps uh, the contribution rates on the employer side and also on the employee side by 1% in each of the next two years of the biennium for the highway patrol, the main plan, the judges plan, and in the National Guard and law enforcement plans uh, by a half a percent each of those two years. Um, then also in the bill, as we amended it last week, was a study going forward to be done by a committee of the legislative management other than the Employee Benefits Program Committee. I chaired the Employee Benefits Program Committee and I know you're all invited to come to those meetings anytime you, uh, you care to come and, and uh, listen to those actuarial reports and pour through all of that very interesting information going forward. Uh, this study would be done by a, a different committee. I think that's a good thing because it, it would broaden the base of uh, legislators that would have a strong understanding of, of what that plan does. So Mr. President, it's critical that we pass this. It's a matter of at some point, and, and we have to take, think long term as we think about pension plans, but at some point the plan will go broke without adjustments along the way. So that's what this does. Uh, with the adjustments, the, the plan over time restores itself to 100% Without it, at some point, it goes broke. So, Mr. President, it's critical enough that we've been informed by Standard & Poor's that if we pass this bill, the bond rating for the state of North Dakota will go from uh, AA plus to AAA. If we don't pass this bill, the bond rating will decrease. So, Mr. President, that's where we're at, and uh, we would encourage uh, approval of the bill. Senator Andrist. Mr. President, members of the Senate, I don't know how many of you uh, have an affinity for reading business journals and following business news. It's always been one of my hobbies. Uh, to say that we're going to fix the system is an oxymoron, I believe, based on what I've been able to read and ascertain practically every defined benefit plan in the country, public and private, is going backwards and ultimately going broke. Uh, the, the concept of defined uh, benefit plans has all been all but abandoned by the private sector. And though the only ones that hang on in the public sector are those that keep feeding the kitty and feeding the kitty. And that's why I think it's time to say no. Senator Shively. Uh, Mr. President, uh, um, this bill came out of the GBA committee with a 4-3 due pass. 
I was one of the three, and I just thought maybe I should explain that a little bit. Um, it's not often I, I disagree with the chairman of our committee, and I don't think I really disagree with him now. If uh, this, this is a recovery plan, and if you believe that uh, we need to, to save this plan, this is probably the most reasonable way to do it. The other thing is, is I want to make sure that we understand that uh, I think it's important that we assure our employees that we are going to cover their, their retirement plan, and, and we have that uh, obligation to do it. I guess it was just my feeling that, uh, as one of the previous speakers spoke, is that uh, there might be a better way to address this issue. And, and uh, you know, looking at an 8% actuary of something that's got to last over 40 years or 30 years without any of these big, uh, big uh, bumps in the road that we had in, in 2008, it just seems like uh, maybe we should look at a different alternative and look at some other plan. It, it says, well, who's going to fund this? Well, it's the same people who's funding it now, the state of North Dakota or the people in North Dakota. You know, and it was just my view that uh, if we keep adding contributions to, to this plan, it never forces us to actually look to an alternative. And I guess for that reason, that's why I'm going to vote no on this bill. Senator Nelson. Well, Mr. President, I've been a member of the Employee Benefits Committee 11 out of the 12 terms I've been here, and uh, we have done numerous studies and we have looked at a variety of things. I would like to remind people in the, ch in the chamber that there are specific rules that affect government pension plans, and they have to be very uh, carefully followed. So there is a major difference between private pension plans and pr public pension plans. I do think it's a good idea to look at if we were to change to another plan, how it would be done. Uh, back in the early 80s, uh, the higher ed people were basically rolled out of the teacher's retirement fund. And uh, there was quite a cost if you wanted to stay in, in the TFFR fund or if whether you wanted to go into TFFR, uh, TIA, CREF, excuse me. Um, and that was done, but it was done after study. You have to take a look. We've got an awful lot of people who are close to retirement and are not going to be in a position of wanting to change their plan at this stage of their life. Uh, the possibility of moving people in if it's new employees, those types of things are possibilities. But I think the idea of a study, and especially a study by another committee, would be useful. Uh, we do have a statutory requirement that anything applying to a pension plan does eventually have to go to the Employee Benefits Committee. But it's always good to get another 15, 20 people educated into how these funds run. I would encourage a green vote on this bill. Senator Cook. Mr. President, uh, I'm another one in the committee who was one of the three that voted no on this. and. Uh, and I agree with the carrier of the bill that we have a challenge here that we need to address. My concern, my concern, and it's a growing concern, it's a concern I had last session, is that we are making a promise to some very important people, our teachers, our state employees, that maybe we can keep, but future legislators cannot keep. We are making a promise regarding their retirement, and I am very uncomfortable making the promise. Uh, the senator from District 121 talked about the rules, and the rules refer to that promise that we are making. Uh, this is a issue that we need to get our arms around. Uh, I, I'm going to vote red on this bill because I am uncomfortable making this promise. Senator Holmberg. Mr. President, members of the Senate, I also served on the Interim Employee Benefits Committee and I do not disagree with what my good senator friend from West River had to say, but during that interim where all kinds of different voices served on the committee and also um, uh, were working on the various bills, we did not have a bill draft that was suggested that would, quote, change or modify. We did not do that during the interim. Also, keep in mind, that during the last interim, or excuse me, in 2011, we were presented as a legislature with two proposals to uh, move the retirement systems, both TFFR and PERS, into a more solvent state. This legislature passed the 
uh, measure which uh, did the two year or four year plan for TFFR, but decided that they were not going to pass this one for PERS. So we have two retirement systems, two large retirement systems going one, which we have done what the study indicated we should do, and the other one is before us now. We do a lot of comparing with North Dakota's retirement system and what's happening in other states. But keep in mind that, as has been mentioned, number one, this legislature has not uh, refused to fulfill its promise, as some states have, by instead of putting money into their retirement systems five and ten years ago, they spent it on roads and other things. Secondly, our system, unlike many of the systems that have great deal of difficulty, uh, we have no COLA. There's no automatic increase. The only increase that occurs is when we as a legislature say we are going to increase benefits. We do not have health insurance as part of our program. And if your goal is to make our system more unsound, then by all means you would vote no on this bill because then you are not following through with what we studied uh, three years ago and you would have a two-year period where the system would uh, become more unfunded. So Mr. President, your interim committee did feel that this was an important uh, program that we should uh, support and uh, we hope that you support the majority of the Appropriations Committee and a majority of the GBA Committee and vote yes. Senator Dever. Well, Mr. President, it's an interesting conversation and, and probably a reason for passing the bill so we have the study. I'd just like to point out a couple of things. First of all, whatever we do with defined contributions, if we decide in the future that we're going to ask uh, uh, new employees to become a part of the defined contributions, we still have the defined benefit plan to deal with. The two bills that were brought forward last session uh, would have required a greater increase in the contribution rate than is being asked for now. Um, the contribution rate level now, if this bill is passed, will go to a total of 16 percent. That's 8 percent on the employee side and 8 percent on the employer side. The bills that were proposed last time to move all new employees to defined contributions would have required that that go to 24 percent instead of 16 percent. So it kind of shows the, the necessity of passing this bill. Um, a lot of good points made. Uh, I, I appreciate the conversation and I think going forward this is, this is a big issue and we need to all be engaged in it. But we need to make that adjustment now that prevents a much neater, bigger adjustment at some point in the future. So Mr. President, I would uh, appreciate your green votes. Senator Dever. Oh, Senator Andrus, I mean, boy. Mr. President, members of the Senate, uh, you know the, the old saying that when you find yourself in a hole the very first thing you need to do is stop digging. And that's what we need to do. And the only way we can stop digging is if we vote red and force ourselves to do the hard thing. Nobody said this is going to be easy. I've, I've been here for 10 cycles now, 10 sessions. Almost all of them have had a bill that would either A, lower the retirement age, or B, increase the participation level or the funding level. This just simply can't go on. We can't keep kicking a can down the road. This is a, going to become a real crisis. We're in a, a fiscal position right now where we could do something about it to keep our pledge to state employees. But if, <clears throat> if, if we wait for the time to come when we're really can't meet those pension obligations, what do we do? Well, maybe we should establish a relationship with California to see what they're doing. Any further discussion? Senator Dever. Well, Mr. President, 
if we don't pass this bill, we're digging a hole, a big hole, a big hole that someday will require not hundreds of millions of dollars, but more than a billion, because that's what we're short right now. So, Mr. President, I'm hurt when we're compared to California. <laughs> you know, they, they, they have, we don't have anybody in our retirement system pulling the kinds of retirements that they are. So, I, you know, I, I think when we listen to uh, the national news and we listen to uh, some of the, the difficulties with the, the pension plans and those, we should feel fortunate that we only have the problems that we have. They had those problems before the stock market went down. We were over 100% funded before that. Um, so, so, Mr. President, we have made those contributions all the time that other states have not because of budget considerations. We don't have a COLA in our plan like those other states have. We do not have the kinds of problems that they have. We do need to be concerned about where we're going in the future, but let's not dig that hole any deeper. Further discussion? Hearing none, the question is on the final passage of Senate Bill 2059. The Secretary, please open the key. All senators have voted. Any senator wishing to change their vote? Secretary, close the key. Final tally on Senate Bill 2059 reveals 35 senators voting yay, 12 senators voting nay. The bill is passed.